seated. Here we are on what night is this? Third night. Third night of Sukkot. Glory to God. And uh, we're going to get some more good word uh, sent our way. Uh, Sherry gets to bring us a message tonight. Sherry, you're on. All right. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. All right. So we are going to continue on our journey tonight. We've had an awesome time so far. You know, Monday night, Jordan carrying us through with the heart and last night with Tiffany with legacy and stuff. So we're going to kind of continue along the same, same theme. And actually, it's going to be a little different because we're all pretty well versed here with Caroline Leaf, right? Okay. So we're going to go on a little Caroline Leaf program tonight. All right? But it's going to have a little bit of a different twist to it. So... And actually, the title of my thing tonight, and keep in mind the whole time, you know, we're going through a Caroline Leaf program here. The title of my thing tonight is A Servant's Heart. So we're actually going to start in Numbers, and I'll just, I'll read it. We're going to go to Numbers 12, and um, I'm going to start at verse 1. So now Miriam and Aaron talked against Moses, their brother, because of his Cushite woman, for he had married a Cushite woman. And they said, has the Lord indeed spoken only by Moses? Has he not spoken also by us? And the Lord heard it. Now the man Moses was very meek, gentle, kind, and humble, or above all the men on the face of the earth. Suddenly the Lord said to Moses, Aaron, and Miriam, come out, you three, to the tent of meeting. And the three of them came out. The Lord came down in a pillar of cloud and stood at the tent door and called Aaron and Miriam. And they came forward. And he said, hear now my words. If there is a prophet among you, I, the Lord, make myself known to him in a vision and speak to him in a dream. Verse 7 is what we're going to focus on for a second here. But not so with my servant Moses. He is entrusted and faithful in all my house. So let me ask you a question before we start. And this is where we're going to start our little Caroline Leaf journey here. And this is actually right for Karen, from Caroline Leaf. I didn't come up with this. But this was a question she actually asked this morning when we were watching something in our Bible study. And she said, how do you become the best kind of person that God can trust with significant responsibility? So let me say that again. How do you become the best kind of person that God can trust with significant responsibility? And that's how I'm going to tie this in to having a servant's heart. So we're in the time of Sukkot. And... We know about Moses leading the Israelites out of Egypt and stuff like that. And we're going to also look at opposites here. So the first person we're going to look at is Moses. But when Caroline Leaf asked that question, she also said to challenge yourself. Well, I'm going to challenge you guys to examine yourselves and see where you think you fall with having a servant's heart. Now, she had said for the next seven days, you know, ask yourself what your reactions are. You know, she's her normal thing of going through releasing, getting rid of toxic thoughts and all that. And um, so for the next seven days, ask yourself, how are you with having a servant's heart? Where do you stand? Where do you see yourself and how you're a servant to Abba? Because ultimately, he's called all of us to have a servant's heart. Most importantly, with a passion to serve him, Yahweh, our Father, our King. But in turn, when you serve Him, you're serving people. And that's what it's about. That's why we're called to serve God, because we're called to serve people. And that's what it all comes down to. So we're going to look at Moses, because Moses was a servant of God. He was a man, Moses, was a man that Abba raised up, Yahweh raised up, to lead the Israelites out of Egypt. And he was a servant to the Lord. He was chosen to lead the Israelites out of Egypt. And, you know, he didn't have the most easy job. He, along the way, I mean, he dealt with all types of things, all types of issues from the people. But his desire to serve Yahweh far outweighed what he saw the people doing or what he heard the people doing. His desire to serve Yahweh and to serve the Israelites, because he was serving the Israelites, leading them out of Egypt. But his desire to serve Yahweh far outweighed anything that man was doing. 
anything that man was saying, was their actions, everything like that. And we know some examples of the things Moses had to deal with along the way with the Israelites. Murmuring and complaining, disobedience, you know, all types of stuff that Yahweh had said, you know, like I think it was Jordan on Sunday night saying about gather the manna, you know, and gather double on Friday, and they didn't do that. So despite all of this on that journey with Moses leading the Israelites, and all that stuff that he heard in the natural that was getting thrown at him all the time from the people, he didn't let that stop him from what he knew Abba had called him to do. He didn't let that stop him from serving, serving the one and only creator of all of heaven and earth. He had a servant's heart, and he was, he was determined to follow Yahweh no matter what anybody else did, no matter what anybody else said, it was like kind of like what we hear mom say, you know, if I got to go it alone, I'll go it alone. Because that was his passion for Yahweh. And that is what Yahweh has called each one of us to be and to have is that servant's heart. And if you just get inside of yourself and look inside of yourself, having that servant's heart, you know what? You see people. And, you know, I've had the experience with, with doing, you know, OFT and, and the food pantry and stuff. And it was, it was a totally new experience for me because I had never been into anything like that before, you know? But it was really, for me, you know, a lot of people say it was mind changing, it was mind altering. For me, it was really heart altering and heart changing because just working with these people so often during the week and you get to hear their stories and meet them and see what they've gone through, you know? And like mom says, each one of them has a story, and each one of them was somebody's baby. And we're here doing OFT, doing the food pantry. If you haven't figured it out yet, this church is a servant church. Okay, this church, our way birth as a servant's heart. And it's a servant church. That's why we're here. We're here to serve the people outside those doors. And so when I first started doing OFT in the food pantry, honestly, when I was approached to do it, it was like, wow. You know, me, least likely, hello, you know, kind of like being up here right now speaking, least likely, you know, seriously. If you had seen me in school, like when I was younger, you know how they do that thing in high school, that they vote most likely to succeed, you know, most likely to go on to be an actor or whatever. I was most shy out of the entire class in my high school class. I mean, seriously, it took me like six months to even meet one friend because I didn't talk. I was like, boom, you know, people would be like, does she talk? Oh, yeah, she talks. You know? Scott, you ask Scott, and he'll say, yeah, I didn't know her first name until the day we got married. You know, <laughs> it's like, what? Come on, seriously? <laughs> he tells that to people all the time. Like, oh, uh, yeah. But it was true. I mean, I was so extremely shy. And all throughout my school years, elementary school, junior, junior high, high school, I was kind of you know, I was very quiet, very shy, so I became a loner because of it. I mean, I had friends and stuff, but it took me forever to meet friends and everything. And, and, but in the midst of that, I focused a lot on my studies. So all throughout my schooling, I was an A student. I was on honor roll all the time and stuff like that. But I was so shy that when I got to high school, and I was a junior in high school, straight A's all the time in all my classes, and my English teacher said, okay, it's time for you guys to do an oral report. And I refused to do an oral report. And she said to me, if you don't do this oral report, I'm going to fail you for the entire semester. And I let her fail me for the entire semester because I could not get up in front of people to do this oral report. And that, that just, there went my, you know, honor roll reputation and all that because I was so, so shy. And it was like, whoa. So when Jordan said that the other night, I was thinking, yeah, yeah, I know least likely type of thing, but... <laughs> I was like, okay. So to being approached to do OFT and the food pantry and stuff was just kind of like, wow, okay, yeah, definitely, I'm going to do it. But I didn't realize then what it was going to cause inside of me now. I didn't realize the heart change that was going to take place. You know, I had, a, I had a knowing of a servant's heart. You know, and I'm not saying I'm there yet because I'm not. It's still a process. But I've come more along the journey and, it's, and now it's like, you know, it's so about the people. It's so about the people. It's so about what Yahweh has called us to do. And so about serving people. And it's like, yeah, you know what? What needs to be done, you got to get it done. 
And if it's just you, yourself, and I, you, yourself, and I do, does it. You know, you get it done three times faster, right? You, yourself, and I. But, you know, and so, so it's like, okay. So Abba dropped that into me. Actually, the title, you know, I think it was sometime last week, A Servant's Heart. And that's what he always does with me. He drops a title first, and then that has me, like, build around it. So it's like, okay, we can do this. So, you know, we looked at Moses, and we, saw, we see that Moses had a heart to serve Yahweh. You know, to have that, if you think about having that type of responsibility to lead all those Israelites out of Egypt and to go what they went through with Pharaoh and everything, you know, so we're actually going to, let's jump over to Exodus 14 now because we're going to read about that. And so we see how, you know, Moses was called up and raised to do what he needed to do and stuff. And like I said, that question I asked you, how, how do you become the best kind of person that God can trust with significant responsibility? You know, to me, OFT is significant responsibility. The food pantry is significant responsibility. To me, and I know I've, I had shared this before at some point, but, you know, last year, having that experience of listening to Holy Spirit, to have me go around the corner to intercede for a girl that's overdosing, on heroin, you know, that was trusting me with significant responsibility. I consider that to be pretty significant responsibility because that was, you know, that was a situation I had never been in before, you know, and it was like, okay, but, you know, how do I become the best kind of person that Abba, that's what my goal is, that's what my desire is. How can I become the servant that Abba has called me to do? How can I just so 100% fully have that heart to serve Yahweh and to serve people? And so it's, you know, how can I become the best kind of person that God can trust with significant responsibility? So if we look at Exodus, so now we're going to jump over into our opposites. We, look at the, we just looked at the man Moses, you know, the servant of God, having the servant's heart, doing what he needed to do. And so chapter 14 and the Lord said to Moses, tell the Israelites to turn back and, and camp before P. Harivroth, I know I just messed that up, between Magdal and the Red Sea. You shall encamp opposite by the sea. For Pharaoh will say of the Israelites, they are entangled in the land, the wilderness has shut them in. I will harden, make stubborn strong Pharaoh's heart, that he will pursue them, and I will gain honor and glory over Pharaoh and all his hosts. And the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord, and they did so. It was told the king of Egypt that the people had fled, and the heart of Pharaoh and of his servants was changed toward the people. And they said, What is this we have done? We have let Israel go from serving us. And he made ready his chariots and took his army, and took 600 chosen chariots and all the other chariots of Egypt with officers all over them. The Lord made hard and strong the heart of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. And he pursued the Israelites, for they left proudly and defiantly. The Egyptians pursued them, all the horses and chariots of Pharaoh and his horsemen and his army, and overtook them and camped at the Red Sea. When Pharaoh drew near, the Israelites looked up, and behold, the Egyptians were marching after them. And the Israelites were exceedingly frightened and cried out to the Lord. And they said to Moses, Is it because there are no graves in Egypt that you have taken us away to die in the wilderness? Why have you treated us this way and brought us out of Egypt? Did we not tell you in Egypt, let us alone, let us serve the Egyptians, for it had been better for us to serve the Egyptians than to die in the wilderness. That's like, whoa. So that's where we're going to jump to an opposite. So remember, we did Moses, the servant of God, serving Yahweh, servant's heart. Well, now we're going to look at an opposite, and we're actually going to go to Exodus, four, we're going to focus on 14.3, and we're going to look at Pharaoh who is the total opposite. But when you look at when you're not serving God, when you're not open to doing the things that he asks you to do, verse 3, they are entangled in the land and the wilderness has shut them in. He's talking about the Israelites there. And when I saw that, it was like Holy Spirit actually dropped that into me yesterday. And I'm thinking, how does this connect to what I'm doing? And I kept going back. They are entangled in the land, the wilderness has shut them in. Because the Israelites were in a place where they didn't want to serve Yahweh because of all of their murmuring and complaining and stuff like that. When you're not open to doing the things Yahweh asks you to do, 
you end up entangled in your own land. You end up being shut in the wilderness. If you don't have a servant's heart, if you're not sold out to Abba, you stay stuck in the wilderness. You get entangled in all the own affairs of your life. You know, you find that things start, you know, things aren't going right. You experience the curse instead of the blessing. You know, challenges are starting to come up where it's like, okay, what's going on here? It's because you are more interested in serving yourself and not serving Yahweh. The Israelites didn't want to serve Yahweh. They wanted, to ser they wanted Yahweh to serve them. Their murmuring and complaining was like, why did Yahweh do this to us? Why, you know, why, why isn't he doing this? Why is he doing that? And if you look at verse 13, which is key too, you know, shows, okay, where was the servant's heart for the Israelites? And even acknowledging at the time what Abba was doing for them. But in verse 13, they, they said, did we not, actually verse 12, did we not tell you in Egypt, let us alone, let us serve the Egyptians? For it would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than to die in the wilderness. Their focus was, you know what, let us serve the Egyptians. It wasn't on let us serve Yahweh. It was on let us serve the Egyptians. So that was just kind of a, 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 a little side note that I had seen because it was like there's something about being entangled in the land and shut in the wilderness. And when we're not in the right place, when we step out of line, we step out of position, we become entangled in our own land. We become shut in the wilderness. And, and that's just, that's not a good place to be. It can be, it is actually the most miserable place that you can be. Because in essence, you're without Yahweh at that time. But let's look at the opposite. And like I said, the opposite being Pharaoh. And it talked in there, you know, that Pharaoh, his heart was hardened. He had a hardened heart. Moses had an open, soft, passionate heart for Abba, for Yahweh. Pharaoh had a hardened heart. He had no interest in serving Yahweh. Yahweh. His goal was not Yahweh. His goal wasn't. Now, you know, he had every, he had an opportunity to like everybody else, anybody else, to to go to Yahweh, to serve Him, but he was not interested in serving Yahweh. He wanted, Pharaoh wanted people serving him. That's why he was spending all this time going after the Israelites and having them and stuff like that. But what Abba showed me is what not having a servant, servant's heart leads to you having a hardened heart. If you don't have an open heart to Abba, and if you're not willing to serve him like he's called you to do, that can lead to you having a hardened heart. And you start to become hard to the things of Yahweh. You become, start to become hard to the things he's called you to. You start to become hard to the needs of the people. And I thought, oh, that explains why you see some people do what they do when they see someone in need and they just walk right by. You know, you hear stories all the time of, of, of you know, a homeless person sitting on the ground and people just walk, 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 walk by, walk by. Or you see somebody that needs help, and people just walk by, don't even take a second glance. You know, and I've always struggled with that. I've always been like, ah, but what is up with that? Why don't people help other people? You know, when somebody sees something happening to another person, why doesn't somebody else jump in and help them? You know, and I always struggled with that. It's like, why is that? It's because people have just gotten a hardened heart because they don't have Yahweh. They're not willing to give up themselves. They're not willing to give up what they have. They're not willing to give themselves up to Yahweh. And they become callous and insensitive, and, and they develop this hardened heart. And so that's where you know, Yahweh was showing me the opposites between Moses and Pharaoh, and the difference between having a servant's heart and having a heart like Pharaoh. And for me, it's like there's no way I'm going to go down the line, road of having a heart like Pharaoh. It's just not even an option. So like I said before, I'm going to say it a couple more times. How do you become the best kind of person that God can trust with significant responsibility? And like I said, Caroline Leaf had challenged, you know, for the next seven days to do, you know, what her program was. But for the next seven days, challenge yourself, you know, how in the morning, how can I be a servant today to Abba or to somebody? At the end of the day, what did I do to have that servant's heart. You know, in the morning, Abba, what it is, how are you guiding me today? You know, we report for duty to sir. Your agenda, 
What, it is, what is it that you want me to do today? Who is it that you want me to speak to? What kind of action it is that you want me to take? And so it's like, you know, the question we need to ask is like, do we have a servant's heart? Do you have a heart to serve God? And the answer, the answers to both questions should be yes. And ultimately, that's what we were created to do. Abba created us to have a servant's heart. He created us to serve people. And I'll, I'm going to read you a couple of um, scriptures that go along with that. So Ephesians 6, 5, and 6, and this is in the complete Jewish Bible, and it's where he's talking about slaves and masters, but it deals with a servant's heart. It says, slaves, obey your human masters with the same fear, trembling, and single-heartedness with which you obey the Messiah. Don't obey just to win their favor, serving only when they are watching you, but serve as slaves of the Messiah, doing what God wants with all your hearts. And then in 1 Peter 2.16, and this is the Amplified, it says, live as free people without employing your freedom as a pretext for wickedness, but live at all times as a servant of God. So again, the question is, you know, do you have a servant's heart? And in, in doing this Caroline Leaf thing, it was like, you know, she was saying different things and stuff, and I kept thinking about this. It's like, man, so many of the questions that she's asking is tied right into, you know, how are we serving Yahweh? How are we serving people? What are we doing to make this world a better place? But most importantly, what are we doing to snatch people out of the kingdom of hell and bring them into the kingdom of heaven? What are we doing to make a significant change for God, for Yeshua, and people know that it's him? It's not us. It's him for, to give him all the glory. So there was a, 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 a comment that actually, a phrase, a statement, I guess you'd say, that Socrates made. And, you know, and dad talks about this quite a lot, quite a bit. But what he comments, phrase he had said was, unexamined lives are not worth living. And I was like, whoa, you got to examine yourself on a daily basis. And Caroline Leaf talks about that to go through her, her brain program, get rid of toxic thoughts and stuff. Examine yourself on a daily basis because, you know, unexamined lives are not worth living. If you're not examining yourself daily, you're not giving yourself the opportunity for Holy Spirit to reveal in you what needs to be changed, what needs to be corrected, what needs to be shifted. You just go about living Live in life with no purpose. Live in life with no destiny. And so I can kind of understand why Socrates would say it's not worth living then. If you're not going to examine where you're at, it's not worth living. And this all ties back to with having a servant's heart. You know what? It's not about us. It's about the impact on the people. You know, just like we know our, our actions don't just impact us. Our actions don't just impact our family. Our actions can impact people outside of there, outside of our family. You, have, you don't know that a choice that you decide to make, which is a wrong choice, obviously it's going to impact yourself. It's going to impact, as Caroline Leaf says, it will impact the generations to come. It will impact your children, your grandchildren, your great-grandchildren. But your choice your wrong decision, my wrong decision not to have followed Holy Spirit and drive around the corner that day and stop and do what I needed to do with that girl that was overdosing would have impacted that girl ultimately where it could have cost her her life. Because I really, I know that I know that I was there for a purpose and that Yahweh had me go there to save that girl from being snatched from the enemy. But if I had made the wrong choice and decided I'm too busy, you know what? If that comes to you, quickly examine yourself. We can't be too busy when it comes to Yahweh telling us to do something because he knows. I would have never ever thought at all, at all, that he was telling me to do that because there was a college student laying in the middle of a parking lot dying. Never would have come to my mind. But Yahweh knew that. But if I had decided, are you kidding me? I'm too busy. I got a five-year-old sitting in the back seat. I got to go to the supermarket, blah, 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 which ultimately could have cost that girl her life. And I would have been accountable for it. I would have stood, I would stand before Yahweh one day and be like, I am totally accountable that I wasn't obedient to you 
and wasn't willing to serve you in serving her to make sure she still had a chance at an eternal destiny with the Holy One. So every thought, every action, every choice we make, it just does not impact us. It impacts, it can impact people we may never, ever, ever meet. It may impact the lady in the produce department at Market Basket that we never even knew that it impacted her. And it all circles back to having the servant's heart, to doing what it is that Yahweh created us to do. So in closing, I'm going to actually, we're going to look at the perfect example of a servant's heart. And a lot of people are like, he was not, he was God. He was not a servant, but it was Yeshua. Yeshua had the nature of a servant. He was the servant of all servants. You know, it, it's, um, it says in Philippians 2, 7, but stripped him, Yeshua stripped himself of all privileges and rightful dignity so as to s assume the guise of a servant in that he became like men and was born a human being. He was the ultimate servant. You know, he, he, he washed people's feet. He did all the stuff that he did because he carried the nature of a servant. He was the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings, but he came down here to serve people. He served Abba and he served people. And he was, he's the ultimate example. And that's what we need to follow. We need to realize if God, if the Almighty One, if the creator of all of heaven and earth gave his son to come down and serve people, woe to us. How can we not, we're not God. How can we not do what God's calling us to do? And that's what he's called us to do. He's called us to serve people. So, like I said at the beginning, how do you become the best kind of person that God can trust with significant responsibility? You know, over the next seven days, you know, and the rest of the time of Sukkot and carry it out a little further, you know, ask yourself that question. Examine yourself every day and say, okay, Abba, how can I be a servant to you? You know, and it all ties into Sukkot. We're in the time of great rejoicing. You know what? And when it, you have a real servant's heart, there is great joy in serving. There is great joy in serving Yahweh. There's a great joy in serving people. You know, I had great joy when I realized the significance of what Abba had me do that day with that girl overdosing. I have great joy when I have a, a specific conversation when someone who came in one way to OFT and they left another way from OFT. Great joy, because I know that I made a difference in this person's life, that he made a difference through me, because I was willing to serve him. Like I said, me, it was like, if I would go back in the natural, it would be like, me, talk to people? Yeah, you know, don't even hug me, you know? It was like, but, you know, I, I, I come a long way, I think. <laughs> Hallelujah. But when you have a heart to serve Yahweh, it is also a heart to serve people. And in the time of Sukkot, what a great, awesome time that is. You know, the time of rejoicing. Grab a hold of the joy that there is in having a servant's heart. You know, some people think, oh, man, a servant's heart. I got to do this and do that. I got to give up this. I got to give up that. Do you know how inconvenient this is going to do to me? You know, you know now what I'm going to have to do? Blah, blah, blah. All of it's blah. You know, it really is. And I, I'm, still, I'm still a work in progress with this, you know? I, and I'm, I'm getting there. I'm going further along the journey because that's my goal. You know, I don't want it to be blah, blah, blah. I want it to be like Tiffany said last night. I'm standing in front of Yahweh and I hear, well done, good and faithful servant. So I'm going to leave you again, you know, and I'm drilling this question into you because it was just so, so significant and it just totally went off in me. And I'm going to spend a lot of time really looking at this. But it's like, how do you become the best kind of person that God can trust with significant responsibility? Amen. Glory to God. Was that good? Did you learn something? Did you get impacted by... Uh, by some things in that. Um, I, want, I want to flesh some additional uh, thinking around that. You know, one of the things that we've learned from our Jewish brethren is 
is this, that we do have a purpose in the world. And our pur purpose is tikkun olam. Now we think, well, you know, as Christians, our, our, our purpose is to lead people to Christ. I mean, if we grew up in any kind of a evangelical kind of setting, we knew that. But ultimately, if we're leading people to Christ, we are making the world a better place. I mean, not if we're leading them necessarily to church or to religion, but if we're truly leading them to Yeshua as Lord, then the world is going to be a better place because their world is going to be uh, a better place. So tikkun olam is, is what we're about. And you know, that happens all the time. And once you get in the rhythm and once you start paying attention to, uh, to how the Holy Spirit leads you, you'll find that you have opportunities all along. I, I like what Sherry said is because when you're serving out of a servant's heart, there's joy in serving. If, you know, I, I can remember people, you know, I'm on the mission field, they would tell me, and it's so tough and so hard. Well, something's wrong. I'm, I'm not saying there's not challenges. I'm not saying that, but, you know, if you're, on the, if you're in the mission field and all you can think of is what you don't have, I don't have TV or I don't have this or I don't have that, I don't have the comforts of America, something's wrong somewhere. And, and it could be you're in the wrong place. You know, it could be that you, you decided to go be a missionary rather than, uh, God calling you there, uh, because I'm absolutely convinced that God gives you a heart for whatever he calls you to do. But I'm also convinced that God always gives you a, a task that's bigger than you can do alone. Uh, glory to God. So that makes a, a great combination. But as uh, Shelley was talking about the opposites of, of, of Moses uh, with a servant's heart, and uh, I, I really want to explore that thought. I'd never seen it, that Moses was a humble man. You know, Cecil B. DeMills gives us a different picture of Moses, and, and maybe we have to con consider what the scripture actually says. But contrasting that with Pharaoh's hardened heart, and in the reading that I have been doing over the past few days, uh, the author of one of the books that I was reading was talking about uh, what the sun does when it encounters different objects. And of course, the sun, S-U-N, and the analogy is the sun, S-O-N, it's the same kind of thing. But I, I never really thought of this. The sun shines, and, and that sun can shine on a, 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 a stick of butter sitting on a plate, and the effect of the sun is that that butter melts. But over here you can have a, uh, the sun shining on a, 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 a pot of mud, and the sun hardens the mud. It's the same sun. I, I never quite understood, you know, uh, the times when it talks about Yahweh hardening somebody's heart. It didn't quite seem fair. It, you know, it almost seemed like, well, maybe, maybe Pharaoh really wanted to be different, but, but God, you know, made his heart. Uh, it, it didn't reconcile with, with what I know of the rest of Scripture. And, and as that came across my path this week, it's like, it's the same sun. See, the, the, the message that came in Egypt, let my people go to worship me, to the Israelites, it awakened a call. It, it awakened we have a destiny. It, it awakened that there's a bigger purpose for our life than, than uh, simply living as slaves here. And, and it was a, a call, let my people go, that sparked growth in them. But that same word, let my people go, it's the same word. When it came to Pharaoh, uh, he was unwilling to change his view, to change how life is going to be. He was unwilling to accept that there may be a Yahweh. Who is Yahweh that I should serve him? I don't know any Yahweh. And, and so the, 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 all the makings for a hardened heart were already there in his makeup, his attitudes toward life, his attitude toward himself, what he thought about himself, what he thought about, all those attitudes were sitting there like mud. And when the sun shone on the mud, it hardened his heart. So it's quite accurate to say that, that Yahweh hardened Pharaoh's heart, just like it's accurate to say the sun hardened the mud. But over here, somebody else encounters the sun, the butter encounters the sun, and the butter melts and becomes soft. 
because of the quality of the butter. The butter's been through a churning that has purified it. And in that churning and purifying process, the, the butter has positioned itself so it's prone toward softness. Moses heard a word from God in a burning bush, and he ended up taking his shoes off at the sound of the voice of, of Yahweh, for the ground on which he stood was holy. Pharaoh heard a word from God and got more stubborn. The softness was already in Moses, and the hardness was already in Pharaoh. When Moses reacted to the to the uh, to his kinsman who was being abused by one of the overseers, and rose up in defense of his kinsman. That was because it was a softness in his heart towards his people. And even though he was raised in Pharaoh's house, and even though he had all the wealth of Egypt at his disposal, and even though he was a prince of Egypt, his heart still had a softness toward Israel, towards his people. And when he saw one of his people being abused, the softness of his heart toward him propelled him to action in behalf of the people. Pharaoh had a different heart. And because his heart was already within itself hardened, that even after he left the people go, he said, what have I done? Are, are you catching this? So the, the servant's heart that Sherry is talking about is a condition of your heart that you give to God. How are you going to get there? What, is it, what, what does it take to get there? And, and when I was taking notes, I, I, I wrote down here on one of these, what prompted Moses to serve Yahweh faithfully? What prompted him to do that? What, what prompted him to do the impossible? What, what prompted him at, 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 a, at, at the age of 80 when he certainly desired, he deserved retirement in Belize? <laughs> what, what, what prompted him to leave, and, and when I say the comforts, I do mean the comforts of Midian, the, the, the comforts of living in a, in, a, in a Bedouin lifestyle with all your food needs met and you know, what do you, I'm going to just take the sheep every day and feed them. I don't have any worries, and I certainly don't have complaining people accusing me of doing this or not doing that. I don't have griping and complaining, and I'm cert, certainly not putting my life at risk by confronting the, the leader of the most powerful nation in the world. What, what, what caused him to leave that comfort? And, 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 it, and it was a servant's heart. There was something bigger than himself. And Pharaoh didn't have anything bigger than himself. Pharaoh's hardness of heart was due greatly to the fact that he was the biggest thing in his own world. He was the biggest thing in his own world. But Moses encountered someone bigger than him. I, I'm convinced that, that all the servanthood in Moses through all those years came to fruition at the burning bush. When he encountered someone greater than him, he yielded his servant heart to that. So two conditions that, that I want us to think about as we come to a close tonight. And, and that is, what is the condition of your heart so that it's ready when you have a God encounter, you'll respond with servanthood rather than hardness? Because you will have a God encounter. You will have many God encounters. But what is it that prepares us for the next encounter, the the next CD we're listening to, the next tape we're listening to, the next message we hear, the next time God breaks into our world and speaks and we know it's God, we, we, we know God's saying something to us, what prepares us now so that when that moment comes, we are prepared to make the servant heart decision rather than the hardened 
heart decision. That's the opportunity we have at Sukkot. Just a time of dwelling with God, of meditating on God. Isn't it great? Seven days to be thinking about what is our heart ready to do. Well, Father, we do thank you and praise you for your love for us. We thank you for, for a, another evening in our, our week, a series where uh, those of us who are here and those watching on, on the uh, Internet, on Facebook, uh, just, just having a time to set aside uh, these seven days and, and reflect upon what you want to speak to us. We thank you, Father, that you are faithful in, to impart to each one of us. And we, on our part, uh, gladly receive the word that's imparted to us and we pledge ourselves to move forward and to celebrate your goodness in our midst. In Yeshua's name and God's people said, Amen. Well, let's stand and sing a song in closing. Uh, the last